Okay. Uh, good morning, my dear students. Good morning. Uh, yeah. So today we were going to continue the things what we left in the last class. I think uh, you can see the slide what I am just presenting it. Is it? Can you see? Yes, sir. Okay. Right. See, in this today's class, <clears throat> uh, we just started with uh, the content of the syllabus, what we are supposed to discuss under uh, design for manufacturing and assembly. And also, I think I discussed uh, uh, what is DFM and what is DFA, right? So in today's class, let us just uh, continue with the things. So where uh, we will go to start with uh, the module one. So basically, uh, module one, we have uh, uh, two concepts to be discussed. One is uh, uh, the material effect of materials and manufacturing processes on design. And second one is uh, tolerance analysis. Okay. So in today's class, we're going to start with uh, the first part of this first module, what is the effect of materials and manufacturing processes on design. Yeah, uh, one thing I wanted to convey at this point to my students. So, so generally what uh, we support uh, the online classes, what we supposed to do now, uh, it will be only 45 minutes for your uh, lecture and uh, 10 minutes. So you will have a quiz on each after the class you will have a quiz so totally it is 55 minutes and five minutes for your uh, switch over so please remember this okay 45 minutes we will have a lecture class and 10 minutes you will have a quiz quiz on the content what we have delivered or what we discussed in that particular class and five minutes will be given for you to switch over for the next class okay this is how we will go to start with the uh, in every day's class of course so in today is the first class for this so uh, uh, there will be no quiz on this today so maybe in the fourth hour so if possible i will going to take the quiz for uh, first and second session also both today right so please uh, be attentive be present in the class I, I can take at any time i can take the quiz not necessary that i have to take only quiz at the end okay so please <coughs> be attentive and please make a note of uh, what we are discussing okay so, because uh, it uh, also been counted for your marks also at the end, I think, right? Yeah. So, in today's class, I will be just starting with the module one. So, where uh, we need to discuss uh, the effect of materials on manufacturing processes on design, right? Yeah. So, I think yesterday I discussed what is the uh, design for manufacturing, what is the definition of design for manufacturing, and uh, how... Uh, the man dfm tool can be used to select the most cost effective material and the process to be used in the production of uh, production in the early stages of the product design and of course also i just introduced what is dfa and where uh, dfa tool is used to assist the design teams in the design of the products that will transition to the productions at the minimum cost focusing on the number of parts handling and ease of assembly so this is what uh, we were uh, discussing in the yesterday's class uh, with the introduction to the DFME and the definition of DFM as well as the DFA, right? So let us start with the module one where we'll have the effect of the materials and manufacturing processes on the design. Yeah. The first thing what we discuss under this heading is the major phases of design. So I think you have already studied the concept of design. You might be knowing what is the design, definition of a design. You might have discussed uh, uh, the different uh, uh, elements of the design process. And also, of course, uh, I think in the optimization process, optimization concept, I think I've just made the co comparison with the conventional design process with the optimized uh, design process. So all these things, of course, uh, we have already been discussed and you already been studied in your uh, UG as well as in teaching, right? So first thing is, so we will go into design, we will go to define a design in context of our uh, DFMA. Of course, uh, design is an iterative process, everybody knows, but when it comes to, uh, in particular, with respect to, uh, the design for manufacturing and assembly, 
so how we can uh, define a design so design is uh, basically it is a process of translating a new idea or a market need into a detailed information from which the products can be manufactured this is how uh, we define uh, the design in context of dfm it, it is a process of translating a new idea or a market need market need into a detailed information from which we can manufacture a product so when we say a uh, detailed information it involves the number of steps and each step has to make a it is a decision making process each step involves the making of a decisions so decision in the sense if you want to select a material so which type of material is uh, uh, suitable for the particular requirement or particular uh, product so you have to decide so of course decision will uh, uh, involve uh, number of factors number of parameters that needs to be considered and based upon that we will go into decide or we will go into select or we will go into decide which will be the suitable material for the particular product as well as for its function and in the similar way the which manufacturing process so we need to make the decision on what should be the manufacturing process for making this product so yesterday i was talking about there are different different manufacturing processes are available in front of us and we supposed to know which is the best suited manufacturing process for that particular product right so this is what the decision so you have to know you have to decide which is the suitable manufacturing process which is a suitable material so there are plenty of uh, uh, decision making processes or iterative process will going to be taken place so this is what uh, once you arrive at uh, the final decision yeah this is a uh, of course the decision will be based upon so many factors and parameters also so once you come to the conclusion or once you made the decision that this is the suitable material and this is a suitable uh, uh, manufacturing process for this <coughs> then you can give the detailed information to the customer or to the uh, industries to manufacture the product this is how they basically the design process or design concepts on design uh, uh, it uh, what to call it as the definition will be explained right mm -hmm. so now what you are uh, just uh, looking at the slide is the major phases of design so that's what i was talking about so i was just uh, defined what is a design in context of uh, design for manufacturing and assembly and now we are explaining of course you might be having you might have studied uh, a number of uh, uh, this kind of flow charts of uh, what are the different uh, phases of design uh, in your ug as well as in your pg of course this is a uh, uh, this is again the another one uh, uh, different uh, flow chart which is showing the different phases of design in context of our uh, dfma right so this flow chart uh, what it is showing is the major phases it is not it does not include so there are of course plenty of uh, uh, small phases also will be involved minor phases also is there but it is not showing it is it is we are just uh, uh, just representing only the major phases of design right so let us start with uh, the first phase of any design is uh, identification of a problem so this is the most important thing in uh, any designing uh, designing any products why because uh, the product is being sold to the customers and customers should get the benefit and they should use that product so how do we know whether that product is useful to the customer or not or whether it is available in the market or not or whether if it is available whether it has been satisfying their requirements whether they can get those product at a uh, affordable cost there are plenty of questions will come into the question even if uh, the product is available in the product in the market so therefore the first thing uh, first phase in our design is the identification of the problem so you need to identify what actually the problem is there you need to do the market survey you need to do the literature survey 
so where the problems are there you need to go to the customers you need to discuss with the customers so what is uh, the problem you are facing what is there any pro any solution from our side we can provide for you like that there are so plenty of uh, survey has to be done and from that survey you need to identify what is the problem and how i can uh, provide a solution for that problem so this is what the identification of the problem in the sense so you being a designer you should have a clarity about the what actually the problem is so once you have clarify once you have get the clarity about the problem then you have to define the problem so this is a problem of the society this is the problem what the people are facing in the market so that i need to get the solution once you get that solution then the things will go very easily so therefore the first phase of any design is the identification of the problem because design is a solution to the problem always we say a design is always been a solution to the problem so therefore first you need to know what is the problem is so once you get that then the things will go smoothly so once you identify the problem the next is unavailable information if the informations are not available that is what they have say so if the informations are not available if it is s then you have to go to the files you have to search the files you have to do r and d research and development you have to look it into the patents there are so many aspects are there if the informations if the unavailable information is there then you have to look it out for different files and different uh, R and D pay R and D. We have to do R and Ds, and you have to do the pay. You have to look it out for pays and patents. Like that, plenty of uh, uh, work will be there to get the things done, right? So, <clears throat> so once you have an, uh, once the information is completely available for you. Okay, so unavailable information. It means information is unavailable. If it is yes, you have to go to the files. If it is no, then you have to look it out for the functional requirements. So once you get the identification, when the problem is identified, then what functions that component or that product has to, supposed to perform? So what are the? It has got only one function to perform, or it has to do a multiple func functions to perform. So how it can functions? How it can? Uh, uh, how we can make that product to function so what that function if it has to function what are the requirements of that product so this is the next question what it it comes to the mind of a design engineer so he has to think what is the function of that product and if it has to function what that the requirements is there so these are the things what the design engineer supposed to do so once he decide of course this is the function of the product and these are the functions of course sometimes a product can perform only one function sometimes it may need need to have uh, to perform multiple functions also right so if that is the case so he will going to decide this is these are the he will going to list it out what are the functions that the product supposed to perform and what the requirements that means what are the requirements that needs to be made to make the product to make that functions or to perform those functions so this is what uh, the design engineer will be keep on that's what i was talking about each phase is a decision process for us right so once you decide upon what are the functions and what are its requirements the next important thing is the concept formulation and the preliminary layout so concept formulation in the sense so you might have uh, achieved the functional requirements of a product in a different different ways different different ways simple example if i say if i want to transmit a motion or a power right so how we can transmit a motion or a power so there are plenty of uh, 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 transmitting devices available for us just like a belt drive or a gear drive or a chain drive or a uh, what we call it as a rope drive so like that there are different ways in which you can uh, achieve or you can uh, obtain the function right so but which is suitable for us that is what is to be very important for us because each uh, one it will have its own advantages and disadvantages right so therefore so once you need to uh, once you decide the functional requirements the next step is you need to develop the concepts 
so develop the concepts with the different different uh, attributes or different different uh, adapting different different mechanisms and uh, different different uh, parts available for us so everything you will going to make four or five different uh, uh, concepts so which is of course it is a product only it will satisfy all the requirements but the way in which you are achieving that performance will be different right so like that you will go into get different different uh, concepts and then you have to make the preliminary layout so this is what are the different uh, uh, possibilities available for me to get the uh, required functions to be performed by the product so that is what the concept formulation and preliminary layout once you have developed once you have concepts have been developed and once you have made the preliminary layout the next important thing is the preliminary material and process selection <clears throat> in the sense preliminary material and process selection will have been always been assisted with the uh, uh, material material properties and design code so what we do here in this phase is so here you will go into make or you will go into select the materials selection of the materials of course you might be having a plenty of materials available in front of you but you will go into choose the materials which will be suitable for that particular product and particular satisfaction of the functions or functional requirements right so you will going to select the product the usually select sorry you are going to select the material preliminary and also you will going to make the process selection so how it has to undergo the process so this is a uh, very important for us why because the selection of the material and the selection of the process is uh, the one which will always attribute to the the quality of the product as well as the cost of the product so therefore so all this quality as well as the cost will uh, quality as well as the cost will always shoots up with the product quality product cost ultimately so that is the reason why you should be very careful while you are making selecting the material as well as the process when you are selecting a material and a process so it will both will going to affect the quality and the cost of the product so therefore preliminary selection of a material and the process will play a vital role in a design of any product right so preliminary material in the sense you will going to choose uh, uh, with a parameter as such as a material properties and also of course uh, <coughs> <coughs> design codes so you will going to have uh, the uh, you will going to select the materials uh, at the beginning stage and the process also been decided so once you decide the preliminary material and the process selection the next thing is so you have to evaluate the solution with functional requirement so in between these two selection and the evaluation so there if the information is not sufficient in the sense of course uh, uh, you may feel uh, what uh, information available or what information uh, it is uh, available with us is not sufficient to reach the feasible solution if you just feel at that moment so definitely we can go for uh, uh, modeling and simulation so it is a just a just like a, a virtual environment where you are just at, uh, just observing how the product will work and how the um, product can uh, perform its functions right so that you can do if you feel if you feel uh, modeling and simulation is uh, very much essential since uh, i am feeling the information is sufficient to reach the feasible solution definitely you can go for modeling and simulation and if you opt the modeling and simulation definitely again it has to go if you want to revise the material or if you want to revise uh, the processes then again it will go to the loop what you can see if it is no then you can go to the preliminary material and process selection and again it will come like this only so this is what it is just like an iterative process until you satisfy until you reach the feasible solution until you will get satisfied with the functions and the performance of the product then you have to just process will be keep on repeating it is just like a loop right 
once the information is if you feel the information is sufficient then we can go for the evaluating the solution so we have to evaluate the solution with the functional requirements so because uh, uh, function is the most important uh, parameter for us so once the functions are uh, performed if you are satisfied with the functions of uh, the product then definitely it is uh, one stage of uh, the what we call it not a satisfaction what we can call it as right so there you have to evaluate the solution with the functional requirement so how do you evaluate the solution so of course you can go for the sales or marketing and prototype so they will go in to help you out so how uh, the pro you can make the prototypes and you can check because prototype is a functional model so prototype can help you out for uh, <clears throat> Uh, evaluating the solution uh, and also with a uh, functional requirement so once everything is over once you just uh, satisfied with uh, the functional requirement then you can go for the detailed design so if before going to the detailed design so whether the design is acceptable if it is yes you can go for detailed design if no then you need to revise the functional requirements. This is where uh, the decision has to be made. So whether you have to check, you have to check the solution with the functional requirement, and you have to check whether it is acceptable. If it is yes, then you can go for a detailed design. If not, then you have to revise for functional requirements. Okay. So this is what uh, the different phases we are discussing, and uh, we are moving into the last slide of uh, the major phases of design once the detailed design has been done then we'll come to the detailing of materials and process specification so basically detailed design in the sense see once the concepts what you have defined so there you have to select the best out of four or five if you made which is the best which will stands number one in ranking so that you have to select then you need to do the preliminary material and the process selection. And then it will come to the prototyping. And finally, it will come to the uh, detailed design, right? So in detailed design, so each and the process, the concept, what you have selected, so that will be developed. So that will be developed in the sense, what happens, uh, the each component, each, they will go to do the 2D drawing, 3D drawing, so dimensioning everything so complete uh, the design a detailed design you will go into do it so that will be continued with the uh, detailing of the materials and the process specifications also in the sense so you will go into detail the material what type of uh, material <coughs> which type of material you are having Just a minute. Yeah. So, which type of uh, <coughs> uh, material you have used? Detailing of the materials means along with their uh, uh, material code, material uh, properties description, and their process description. Everything has to be detailed in design. So, that is what uh, you will go into detail the materials and the process in terms of. Uh, the drawing, 2D drawing, and of course, the 3D drawing, and even uh, the assembly drawing. So everything, all components, each components will be uh, drawn, and it will be uh, assembled, and the assembled drawing can also be shown. So once it has been, say, the design changes is necessary, once everything has been done, the next thing is whether you have to check whether the design change is necessary. So design changes, if it is necessary, even if you at this stage, if you want to change, so I need to change, you may feel, so I am not satisfying with the, the material or I'm, I need to know for better materials than this. I need to define more process. I need to process specification should be changed. And even at this stage, it is a possibilities for us to change or to make the changes in the design. Okay. So 
if you feel you need to change or uh, the changes are necessary at this position then what you can change it and again that process will go to the solution with the functional evaluation of a solution with a functional requirement so means again you have to evaluate and along with the making the prototype or whatever it might be so again the process will be just like uh, the loop so again it will go and again you have to evaluate the solution do the detailed design check for the material the detail the materials and process selection until you say so changes are not necessary so if you feel the changes are not necessary then you can uh, proceed with the phase proceed with the design process with a bill of materials so what are the different materials how many uh, how many uh, components you have used for making the product so all those things their material standards everything you can <coughs> you can make out and you can just define the process right and once the bill of material has been made then the next thing is manufacturing so so we will going to go for uh, manufacturing the product and finally once the products has been manufactured and it will leads to the customer so you will going to have uh, marketing purchase and accounts everything it will go and it will going to be product will be manufactured as well as and it will reach the market so the market in the sense it will be so the customers this is how basically the different phases of the design of any one product even a simple product if i take i was talking in the studies class with a simple pen so all this process has to go all these phases that uh, design of a pen has to undergo this is how we define the or we will going to discuss the major phases of design very important from the examination point of view also 10 marks question in your exam so with a neat block diagram explain uh, the major phases of design okay so any clarification from anybody so you can have at the students awesome. Mithun, are you there? Yes, sir. Yeah. Any clarifications, Mithun? No, sir. No. Okay. Sukrut? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Srinidhi? Hello, sir. Yeah, Sukrut, tell me. Srinidhi? Yes, sir. Okay. Yeah. Any clarifications, ma? No, sir. Right. Shall I proceed? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Right. Okay, then. Yeah, so this is uh, the different, uh, sorry, major phases of design what I wanted to just discuss in the first class because uh, <clears throat> why just I am giving more uh, uh, importance for this uh, major phases of design because uh, our main intention is, our main objective is we need to design the products for its manufacturing and assembly. So when it comes to uh, the word manufacturing and assembly, so you supposed to know, so one most important thing what you're supposed to remember is the material and also the process. So these two will play a vital role uh, in any of the design, right? So therefore, so our main, our main ultimate goal is how we can choose the material how we can define a suitable process for that particular product. This is what we generally, we are, what is our main intention is, right? So that is why I'm just giving more prominence for uh, these major phases of design because uh, each and every stages we need to make a decisions. So because uh, the, either it is a function, whether it is a uh, safety, whether it is a usability, whether it is a a cost everything will depends upon what type of material we select what type of process we're going to define to manufacture the product so these two are the one which will going to affect the cost of a product so that's why we should being a design engineers we should adopt we should adopt a such a kind of a design which will go into reduce 
the manufacturing cost, the material cost, so that the total cost, the final cost of the product will be reduced. Okay, so of course, keeping uh, so many factors into account, that's what I was talking in yesterday's class. If you want to improve the quality, definitely the cost of the product will also shoot some. Then we have to do the optimization or we need to do the trade-offs between uh, the quality and the cost of the product. And at particular value or for some particular instant, we will go into get, we can uh, satisfy uh, with the, both uh, the quality and the cost to the customers. So this is a very challenging task, very tricky uh, task for a design engineers. But we will go into adopt the DFM tools, uh, DFA tools, how uh, we can uh, minimize uh, the total cost of the product ultimately, right? <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> the next thing uh, what I wanted to convey here is the effect of material properties on design. Effect of material properties on design. So, of course, we have a block diagram here. So, with this block diagram, you can easily understand. So, how the material or material properties will go into effect on the design. See, when you say a design, the food for design is a material. So, Food for design in the sense, so whatever the design you do, it needs to be converted into a product. So when you want to make a product, you need a material. So whatever the design you do, and uh, that will be reflected in the form of uh, the material, the properties of the material and the way in which the product will perform its functions. So therefore, a successful product is a one that uh, performs well for a good value of money and gives a pleasure to the user. This is very important for us. In the sense, uh, a successful when we say a product is successful, it is a, a product is a successful only when it is performs well, functionally it performs well, and uh, it gives a good value for the money and gives a pleasure to the user. This is a very important thing. Then only we will say a product is successful, right? So, why I'm talking this at this instant here is a successful designer should take into account the function, material, material properties and manufacturing processes. Okay, as we have shown in the diagram over there. So look at that block diagram here. So it is showing the material properties, manufacturing processes, and even the requirement of the customer and the consumer or a customer or a consumer and of course it will have uh, the what we call it as uh, the secondary relationships also will be having it will there right the what uh, i will just discuss that later so why what i am talking at this moment of time here is see if a product has to be a successful its material properties will have a more effect on its functional properties so when you look at uh, the block diagram over here so it starts with the functional and consumer requirements move to the component design then material properties and manufacturing processes so that's why I just define what is, when do we say a product is successful? So if you purchase a pen, simple example. So that's what I was talking about, a single pen in the yesterday's class. 
So what are the properties that you look at? What, wow, how, when do you go into purchase? How do you purchase a pen? What makes you to purchase a particular pen? So it might be its aesthetics. It might be its uh, cost. It might be its looks or it might be its, uh, uh, what you call it as performance. So there are plenty of uh, factors and parameters you will go to consider while you are purchasing a very simple pen. Am I right? So this simple pen is of maybe a 2 rupees or 5 rupees or 10 rupees pen. But still, the person or the customer who purchased that pen who look it out for. So whether it is very easy to hold it, whether it has a grip, so when you are writing, right, so it can have a grip, right? So second thing is whether it will write neatly the appealing of uh, the appealing what you have written on the page. It is appealing like that. There are plenty of things you will start looking it out. And finally, you will go into purchase a pen and you will go into ask what is the cost of the pen at the end. This is what the customer's psychology, right? So of course, even purchasing for a two rupees pen, you're looking out for so many things. So you just imagine if you want to design that particular pen, how much amount of time, how much amount of cost have been involved in design. So therefore, of course, ultimately what is required is the satisfaction of the customer is the ultimate goal for any design engineer or any company, right? So therefore, these material properties, so if you just look at, of course, manufacturing process, I will take, of course, I'm just shown here. These material properties are very important for uh, making any products because ultimately the one which is been tangible is a material, right? So that material should have so many properties so that it can satisfy the customers in so many ways with the cost wise, whether it is a performance wise, whether it is aesthetics wise, whether it is an ergonomics wise. So there are plenty of parameters that needs to be satisfied by the material. So therefore, the material property is a very, very important for us while you are <coughs> uh, defining or when you are designing a product. So now we'll have another one. Uh, uh, block diagram effect, same thing. It is effect of material properties on design. So why I'm talking about this here is properties of stock materials, behavior of materials in the component, and component geometry and external factors, effect of fabrication method. So this is what uh, what we say the factors considered in anticipating the behavior of material in the component. So because the material will go into behave in a different, different ways with the different, different uh, environments. So therefore, the properties of the stock materials, so means before you just manufacture any product, the you will have a raw material so raw material will have uh, its own properties. And once it has been uh, manufactured, the behavior of the materials in the component, once it undergoes a different processes, okay? So the material may behave in a different way. Okay, so therefore, so that is because it might have the component geometry and the external factors. So why the material will go into behave differently in the component? Because the material has given a different shapes, different geometry. And of course, it has been, been put into a service under different environmental conditions. So in under such conditions, the materials will go into behave in a different base. So these are the way I'm talking these things here is, this is a very important thing because it is not the ultimately the stock materials or the raw materials. It is the material which has been processed, which has been given a shape, and it has been subjected for a different working conditions. So that 
behavior of the material will going to be taken into considerations for successful product so therefore you should be in a position to that's why we are just going to test it or uh, whether if you could not able to test it you can do the simulations also on the particular environment right so product proper making a prototype making it into work in a uh, required conditions with the required material and we had to test once the product has been manufactured and if it is behaving differently than what we anticipated at the beginning then the definitely the product may lose its fame in the market so that's the reason being a design engineer so we should take off the material properties of course at the raw material stage as well as the material once it is been used in the component okay once it has been fabricated once it has been processed once it has been shaped has been changed and once it has been subjected for a different environmental conditions how that material will going to behave with respect to the component that is the one thing what we supposed to check it out so that's why the selection of the material will play a vital role in uh, successful products okay so this is what uh, the effect of materials on design so of course if you uh, the material property or material may not function as it has been anticipated at the beginning then your design you need to change the design you need to change the material everything so once the material has been changed so everything will keep on changing it is just like an iterative process so therefore the behavior of the material in the component is a very 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 important for a design engineer so that he can make that product as successful in the market in the sense the you are meeting you are reaching the satisfaction of the customer you are taking the customers into the confidence so that this product what you have designed and what you have released into the market is as successful this is what we generally uh, make in our product design the satisfaction of the customers right so therefore the materials or material properties will also have an effect on the design of a product so please uh, when you are designing a component please don't take only the properties of the raw material but how that materials will behave once it has been processed once it has been changed the shape once it has been subjected for a different environmental conditions and a working conditions this is a very important thing what being a design engineer you supposed to know, right yeah so this is the effect of material properties on the design so any clarifications my dear students because this is another one important question from the examination point of view maybe they may ask for five marks so what is uh, explain the effect of material properties on design and effect uh, effect of manufacturing processes on design so any clarifications anything if you want to ask you can have it here no sir you don't condesh no sir i very support the left no sir the group very left in the network issues sorry network issue Yeah. Anything to ask? Any clarification, my dear students, so that uh, we can uh, just to wind up. If it is no clarification tomorrow, of course not. Uh, in the fourth hour class, I will just uh, discuss with uh, the effect of manufacturing processes. Okay. So all those things we will going to discuss at uh, on the fourth hour. Yes, sir. Okay. okay. If possible, we will have a quiz also on uh, these two sessions. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay. All right. Thank you. If you don't have any clarification, I'll just uh, leave the meeting. We will meet at eleven uh, fifty. Uh, okay. Thank you. Thank you.